Greetings in the name of Christ. My name is Walter Meyer III. We will be studying today the gospel lesson for Proper 4, Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. First of all, we will go through the Greek text, and then there will be a few suggestions for a sermon. So, turning to the Greek text. Epede, which means after. And then we have the verb pleiro, and the subject of that verb is Jesus. So after he had finished all his remata, all his words, all his sayings, to or in the akoas, uh, ears, or better hearing of the people, Aeolfin, he entered into Capernaum. Verse 2. And the doulos, the servant of a certain centurion. That's the first word, centurion. And then kakos echon, having it badly. Uh, idiom was ill. Being ill. And then the next verb, amelin, that comes from the verb mellow. This is an imperfect, was about to tell you ton, was about to die. And then concerning the servant, hos, who was to him intimus, precious, valuable, costly. So this servant was valuable, precious, to him, to the centurion. Verse 3, and hearing concerning Jesus, so this is a genitive of time, when he, was, when he had heard this, uh, hearing concerning Jesus, apestelen, the subject is the centurion, the centurion sent to him, to Jesus, presbuteros, uh, these would be elders, elders of the Jews, and then Eroton, asking him, asking Jesus, and then Hopos, that Elthon coming, he might heal. Here we have the verb diasotso, and this is an aorist subjunctive, that he might heal his Julon servant. Verse 4. And those, and then we have the verb paraginomai, and this uh, is an aorist middle parsable to come to. And those coming to Jesus, the next verb, here we have it in the text, parakalun, from the verb parakaleo, this is an imperfect, were appealing to him. And then spudaios, earnestly saying that worthy he is for whom you would do this. Uh, the verb there at the end, par exe. Uh, this comes from the verb par echomai. And this is a future middle second person singular. Again, for whom you would grant this. Verse 5. For, and then agapa, he loves our nation and the synagogue, the synagogue he built for us. So the verb there at the end, oikotomeo, this is an aorist, he built for us. Verse 6, and can you please page up then for verse 6. And Jesus, at poor Uito, went with them. And already, while he was not far, uh, the verb that we have here in verse 6, apeko, this is a present participle, to be away. Uh, and already, while he was not far away from the house, and then the verb next, Ep empsen. 
He sent friends. Now the subject is, once again, the centurion. So putting that all together, the centurion sent friends saying to him, saying to Jesus, Lord, may, and then skulu. Uh, that comes from the verb skolo. This is a present passive imperative, which means to trouble. So passive, do not be troubled. In the sense, do not be put to trouble. And then continuing, ugar, for not worthy I am that under my roof you should come. Verse 7. Dio means therefore for this reason. Therefore, I did not myself, and then we have the verb here, axio, to judge worthy. So putting that all together, uh, therefore, I did not judge myself worthy to come to you. And then going on from there, Allah, Apa, Logu. But say a word. Uh, there we have an aorist imperative, but say a word. And my pice, uh, that can mean child, but here it means servant. And then we have the verb, yeah, And this is actually a third person aorist passive imperative to heal. And my servant must be healed. Verse 8. For even I am a man. So I, and ego there, emphasis, I, and then Amy, am a man. I am a man under authority. And then the verb at the end of this line, tasomenas. And that is from the verb tasso. This is actually a present passive participle. Uh, and it means now in this context, for I am a man who is habitually placed under authority. Then continuing with the next line, beginning with echon. Having under myself soldiers, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. All right, going on to verse 9. And please scroll up then to verse 9. Beginning then with Akusas. And Jesus, hearing these things, was amazed at him. So there we have the verb thaumatso, and that's an aorist, to wonder, to be amazed. He was amazed at him. And then straface. Uh, this is from the verb strefo. This is actually an aorist passive participle, and the passive means to turn around, and turning around to the crowd following him, he said, Lego humin, I say to you, not in Israel such great faith have I found. Um, we have there the word at the end, tasutos, so great so large. Such great faith have I found. And then finally, verse 10. We have at the first the verb hupostrepho. This is an aorist participle. It means to return. And those returning to the house, um, and then we have also um, actually the subjects. The and then this is a participle here. It's an aorist passive participle. Those who had been sent. So let's put that all together again. Those who had been sent, returning to the house, and then Huron, found the servant. And then at the end here, we have a present participle from the verb hugaino. And this is meaning to be healthy. And so you could translate that being in good health. So not only was the servant healed, but he was also in good health. So once again, 
found the servant being in good health. So thus far are going through the Greek text. And now just a few ideas with regard to a homily. And certainly what stands out in this text is the faith of the centurion. The faith of the centurion. And that could be the theme then. With this added thought, the faith of the centurion as an encouragement to us. Now you can start off by saying what is faith? And how do we define faith? Uh, there's no better definition than in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So this is confidence in something which cannot be seen. And now thinking of the centurion's faith. He did not go out to meet Jesus, but he still firmly trusted in what he could not see. And so his faith included full confidence in, now three parts for the sermon, full confidence in Christ's willingness to help, Christ's word, and Christ himself as the Son of God. Now from the start it should be explained that this centurion was obviously a convert. And how did he come to faith? He was in contact with the Jews, with their scriptures. He built their synagogue. And through that scripture, what we call the Old Testament, he was brought to faith in the true God. And he recognized Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And so now the first part. Uh, this centurion has, has full confidence in Christ's willingness to help. He was a humble man. He felt unworthy. There was this distinction between Jew and Gentile, but more than that, he was aware of his sins. And so for those reasons, he felt unworthy to come to Jesus, to have Jesus come under his roof. But he still had confidence in Christ's willingness to help because he knew about the true God. He knew about the Messiah. He knew about God's grace, his undeserved kindness, his unmerited favor the grace and mercy and love of God, and that God is willing to help those who trust in him. Also, then, the next part, the centurion had complete trust in Christ's word. So that stands out <laughs> clearly in the story. Just say a word, and my servant will be healed. And he knows that Christ's word has with it authority. And so we, too, are encouraged then to have this full confidence in the word of Christ. And through this word, we were brought to faith. Through this word, we are preserved in the faith. This word is involved in the sacraments. And so it's not simple water only, but it's the water joined to the word. And therefore, a miracle happens. And the same thing, Christ's word joined to the elements of bread and wine. And then the final portion of the sermon, the third part, the centurion had full confidence in Christ as the Son of God. Again, knowing the Old Testament scriptures, being a believer, he saw Christ as the Messiah. He knew that the Messiah would be God, the Son of God. He calls him Lord. And this is a confession of faith that Jesus is very God. And so we too, as well, are encouraged continually to recognize Jesus as God, the Son of God. And therefore, we have full confidence that the total penalty has been paid for our sins because Christ, the Son of God, was on the cross paying the penalty for our transgressions. God could do this. And as well, God was victorious over death and arose from the dead. Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, the God-man, is directing all things for the good of his church, controlling all of world history as his history goes to the last day. And therefore, we can go to Christ, the Son of God, with full confidence in prayer, knowing that he will answer our prayers in the best way. Spiritual blessings 
We do not pray, Lord, if it is your will, grant us a stronger faith, grant us wisdom through your word. For physical blessings there we pray, Lord, your will be done. But we know that Christ will give us the best answer because of his love, and he can do this because he is very God. And so again, the centurion's faith and encouragement for us, we have full confidence in Christ's willingness to help, in Christ's word, and in Christ himself as the Son of God. May the Lord bless your meditation on this text and your preaching of it. The Lord be with you.